Massachusetts, my former rivalry show, Sophie Freehub, and you're watching my Freedom Ring. Welcome, Left Freedom Ring. I, I don't know. Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees were just in here. I don't. I don't know what's Guest going appearance, on. appearance. Yeah. yeah. They're getting ready for the live stream tomorrow at 9 p.m. on the Let Freedom Ring live stream. But my guest this week, uh, Herbie Dan, Dan Cornell. Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Excited. Yeah, pleasure to have you on. We got we got the Michael Myers mask that you you brought in here. We'll probably end up talking about that a little bit. But yeah. let's get to know you first. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? So I'm originally from uh, the Upper Valley. Enfield, like Canaan area, two small towns. Oh, Canaan. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You were just there, right? Softball. Yeah, for softball. Yeah, tournament. yeah, yeah. So I grew up there, um, kind of like back and forth. My dad ended up settling in uh, Enfield with a house that he, he bought. Me and my mom grew up there, my um, half brother. And then um, went to Mascoma High School. It was like Class M, which is Division Three now. Yeah. I don't know how the divisions work. No, yeah, it's smaller. Was that, uh, yeah. It wasn't like the small school, though. I remember like... No, it was, it was like 400 kids. Okay. It was like medium size for yep. New Hampshire. Um, and then went to UNH undergrad. And then uh, grad school at UNH as well. Nice. Um, and then moved down here. Yeah. So, so Canaan, though, like there's... What's that like growing up up there? There's not a lot. Yeah, there's not a lot uh, <laughs> to do there. I grew up partially like on like an old uh, dairy farm where we kind of like make sure the cows didn't die. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we like lived on a pond for a while. And yeah, I just kind of bounced around. I think there's only like maybe 2,000 people there. So it's pretty small. It's very rural, very woodsy. Was that an easy transition into college at UNH or...? Uh, it was very different. Yeah. Going there, it's like its own ecosystem. Um, it was, yeah, a huge change. Creepy. It was weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think I adjusted well. What I like about UNH is it's small enough to feel like a, a college in New Hampshire, but big enough that you can kind of lose yourself in it and you can... Um, you know, join clubs, you can go see like concerts and all sorts of stuff. So um, I, I enjoyed my time there. My, all my brothers went there. What was your freshman dorm? Uh, it was Philbrook. 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 Okay. There was Philbrook and then there was another one. I can't remember what it was called, but there were mirror images. Yeah. So like <laughs> it would be like confusing if you would go into the wrong one. It was all backwards. So you're like, where, where am I? I, I can't find my way. Uh, so my friends would come back from parties and they would call me. They'd be like, I don't know where I am. I'm like, you're, you're probably in the other dorm. Yeah. Uh, like just, just retrace your steps, dude. Just come back uh, to, to life. But yeah. Not too funny. That's awesome. Uh, now I got to ask this. Now, what are three things that everybody should know about you? Mm. Three things that people should know. Um, I have a beautiful family. I've got a wife, a new son who's nine months old. Oh yeah. A future, yeah, future hiker slash horror fan. <laughs> um, so yeah, beautiful family. I'm a mountain guide on the weekends uh, up in the White Mountains in New Hampshire, and I've been doing that for a couple years now. And the other thing is I love horror movies, and that's a big part of why I'm here today. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but like I. Love them. I watch them. I talk about them. I um, read as much as I can about them. So um, yeah, those are like the three kind of major pillars right now okay. of Dan's life. So. <laughs> so new dad. Yeah. What's going on? Nine months. You said, how's sleep going for dad and mom? Uh, it sucked in the beginning, or it was <laughs> non-existent. Yeah. You basically um, get up every like two hours for two to three months. And um, now, though, since he's nine months, he's sleeping almost all the way through. He gets to like 3, 4 a.m., wakes up. We either, you know, like help him down or we'll like stay with him or whatnot. But that feels like a dream <laughs> to like be able to sleep like six straight hours. feels amazing. And I feel like so energized now after like months of it. Um, my wife took the brunt of, of a lot of that for sure. But 
Um, yeah, it's getting way better, way better now. I feel like totally energized. That's uh, pretty awesome. Awesome, awesome. And you got, and you guys are in Nashua now, right? Yes, we're in yeah. North Nashua okay. by um, uh, Hollis, like okay. right on the line. So right by all the orchards and all that stuff there. Airport, like the airport, or my yes, like, okay. yeah, yeah, Coburn yep. area, yeah, yeah. So sometimes I'll run by the airport, like I, I'll do runs through the orchards. There's farms back there. It's really nice. Um, but we're like close to Amherst Street where all the like um, shopping and all that stuff is. And that's where my son goes to daycare. And so, um, yeah, it's a really nice area. Nice. Yeah. And, 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 and we talked about this last week because we had a guest that went to Daniel Webster College. Yeah, right so there. Yeah. And it's just, do you ever see people like it's anything spooky. going on? No, no nothing. Yeah. I yeah. see, sometimes I'll see like the ball fields being used. Um, but I think one of them, they just let grow out. Oh, gosh. Um, which is a waste because it was really nice. But, yeah, when I run through there, I think they have, like, some sort of special event there. I have no idea. It could be, like, it could be really cool. It could be a, a neat place. But I think it's kind of expensive and, I don't know, it's, like, a weird spot. But, yeah, as far as I know, there's nothing going on there. Yeah, it's a shame. And that's been closed, be like, even before the pandemic. I want to say, yes. like, 2018. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, sticking with the theme of the show, which is Let Freedom Ring. Uh, we ask everybody this. It's the money question. Um, what does it mean to you to be an American? Yeah, I thought a lot about this, and uh, I think it's complicated to be an American. I think um, we, as Americans, always have the best intentions, but sometimes the results aren't always what is intended, if that makes sense. I think sometimes I subscribe more to being like a New Hampshireite and like a New Englander, right? Or like, coming from a rural background or someone who likes the outdoors and like part of all that is like I'm able to do that because I'm an American does that make sense yeah. so it's like it's kind of like a multi-layered thing I don't really like get super into politics and all that stuff I just like being with, in the woods with people and talking about horror movies because like we live in a place where we can do that so it's pretty pretty cool so Overall, it's complicated, but um, it's a it's a good relationship. Yeah, no, it's definitely complicated. You know, it, it, a lot of people, you know, it's it's not perfect. I'm glad I'm here. You know, mm -hmm. with everything going on in the world, mm -hmm. you know, we we're sitting here talking about you know horror movies and hiking. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like we're afforded that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I think because a lot of your guests use that word opportunity, I think there's definitely a lot of it, and there could be more. I think for some people, for a lot of people. But um, yeah, to be, I, I think I feel it more when I do like a sporting event or something, or um, I played basketball abroad when I was young in Australia. Oh, okay. Yep, when I was like 13. So that I felt more. I was like, all right, we're like together doing this thing. You yeah. know? Um, so like sports, it's very more clear cut. <laughs> but I think, you know, people will say well, the divisiveness and um, all that going on, like it gets a little murkier, but I think overall we all want like kind of what's best as Americans and we just have different ideas of what that is. Do you think though sometimes the divisiveness is kind of what is great about being an American because you have the right yeah. to say what you want and think the way you want? Yeah. That's going to cause people to be, they're not all going to agree. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think being able to express your ideas and, and, you know, they talk about the marketplace of ideas, right? Like put your ideas out there. The best ones should like kind of bubble through. Um, so, yeah, I, I subscribe to that for sure. And I think for me too, like being a student of history was my background at UNH. Um, knowing that like a lot of it has to do with like class as well and those types of relationships in America and like wealth and where it goes and all that stuff is like, really interesting and I think is a, a part that needs to get addressed more in America and like how we deal with that but um, yeah overall like I think some quarreling is good there's obviously stuff that's not good but yeah. um, you know you don't want like total consensus like you, you don't get good ideas that way no no I agree so that's, that's a good answer now mm. you got I want to get into the fan questions first Mm. Uh, first question, not a question, questions and comments. <laughs> yeah, We a post it as questions, but we always get comments. I might just start saying post your questions and comments. Yeah. But Dodo, that was Yeah, Amanda Doe, yep. Okay, yep. she just mm -hmm. said beautiful view. Um, yeah. It was a great view, uh, the picture that we used. I'm trying to think what was in the background of your profile. So that is Huntington Ravine. That is on Mount Washington on the east side. 
And there's a pretty famous rock climb called the um, Pinnacle Buttress. It's like this big rock formation and they climbed it in like, I wanna say like the 30s or 40s, like really scary stuff. But nowadays it's kind of like a nice mellow climb and they have this big traverse and stuff. And so it's, it's probably one of my favorite climbs. Um, it's just hard to get out there. It's yeah. like a two to three hour hike, you know, and you got to get someone who knows like safety stuff and all that. But yeah, that like, if you guys haven't seen that picture, it's like a really nice uh, view of Washington that not a lot of people see because you can only get there by ropes. So. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, next one, uh, Marsha Littlefield, is this mom? Mm -hmm. you, okay. Shout out, to, shout out to, to Mama Herbie here. Uh, she says, love this. Yeah, yeah, she's a big fan. Probably number one supporter of the Cornell family. <laughs> so, yeah, love you, Mom. Thank you. Um, next one from Ricky Atherton. Uh, you pro I, I, Ricky, uh, I play softball with Ricky. Great mm, guy. Okay. Captain of a couple of our teams we play on. Um, have you ever climbed any of the terrifying 25, 25 scariest uh, trails in New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. If so, which are the worst? Yeah, I had to look at the list because after the 48s, like I just go out so often, I haven't like really kept track of the hikes that I'm doing, but I remember uh, those particular hikes. I've done probably almost 20 of them at this point. And in terms of worst, it's hard to say. It depends on the weather, it depends on your comfort level. So like a really good example is I do a lot of rock climbing. So like my comfort level with these 25s is much higher than someone who's like never rock climbed, right? So I think if I was to be like a pure hiker, I probably would have a hard time with like Huntington Ravine. There is a trail that goes up there. It's really steep. It's like just below needing kind of a rope and protection. Um, so that would be a big one. Holt Trail on Cardigan is super steep and really slick. Um, did you ever do the Flume Trail? You've done Mount Flume. I've done, yeah, I don't know, like I've done all the 48, yeah. you were part of that. I don't remember what trail's what, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just do the Mount, like I can tell you, but even now, when pe I'm like, there's some things I don't, I just don't remember. You yes, know? yeah, it all kind of like converges and you're like, I think this was this mountain, but definitely the Flume Slide Trail I did, I think last year recently, and I was like, man, this is kind of greasy and slick. Um, so that's one that is like up there. I know all the stuff on Adams, like the subway and um, the waterfall trail, like I, it has a French name, I can't remember it. But um, those are like pretty rocky and like can be pretty um, dangerous if you're not careful. Or, like, what did we do on Christmas Eve on, on Washington? We did the Lionhead Winter Trail, which I did three weekends in a row this yeah. winter, and that was tough. Yeah, we <laughs> it were. was hard. I and that was that was a shame because the the, the wind was manhandling us. Yes, yeah. You know, and we, I think it was like seventy mile an hour winds, which is that's usually like the cutoff for us for guiding it is winds that can like knock you over or if someone takes we watch like a client and if a client takes a step and their step is like out of line where it should be you're like okay that's kind of like we're getting to the edge of comfort level um but yeah that was tough that's kind of that's a steep technical route well i mean i was with you and jared jared mm -hmm. patnot and i was like i'm gonna go until these guys say we can't because <laughs> yeah. you know yep. i i did a little winter hiking but you guys like know your winter hiking mm. And finally, when you guys like were turning around, I was like, because in my head, I like totally was like, you know what? If I die out here, I die out here. You yeah, know? Like, you're just, <laughs> yeah. Washington, well, a lot of the White Mountains, you can't just brute force in the wintertime. Yeah. Summertime, you might be able to get away with it. Um, but again, it's like those, like, what risk are you willing to take? I think people did that summit stuff. that day, but where we wanted to do it early so that we could enjoy Christmas Eve. Yes, yeah just wasn't gonna happen yeah it's there's three storm systems that form over mount washington so that's why it's so turbulent all the time and it it changes very quickly like i've been up there in like a t-shirt in january but i've also been like fully bundled up like we were and totally uncomfortable um and like on the edge of danger i yeah. think i've i've now just crossed the threshold where i've done more successful summits than i have unsuccessful winter summits yeah, yeah. but it's taken me guiding and all that stuff to like get out there a bunch to do it 
Um, yeah, it's no, joke. it's no joke. Things can change. I mean, someone dies every year. You know, last year that that twenty year old girl not prepared and yes, yeah. she did. Uh, Link, I think Link, Lafayette. We did that in the yeah. winter before. Yeah, the we, Franconia Loop. And yeah. we cruised. Yeah, I think we did. It, I was weird. Like, I did it faster than than, than I had done it in the summer. Yeah, and but it could. T it, listen, the mountains are unforgiving. Yeah, and they, they totally are. You know, you make a mistake and. Can cost you your life. There's a thing in um, avalanche training called heuristic traps, which is like shortcuts that our mind takes. So one of them is like, you and I did that easily that day. We could easily tell ourselves like, winter hiking's not that bad. Yeah, like we yeah, did Franconia yeah. Loop. Yeah. You know, like this girl must have not known what she was doing. But you go up in another time with like, like equipment that isn't working or whatnot. Um, yeah, it can get pretty spicy and like you just have to know. Each time you go up there, you're you're assuming some risk, and you're trying to like mitigate it through like your clothing, your um, you know scheduling it on a day that's not really crappy out, and all that stuff. Um, taking a guide if you don't know the routes, or like it's technical, or you need help. Um, you know, you know, I, I've I've made jokes about the signs on the trails. Yes, mainly in like the summer. Yeah, but they're true. They are true. They're there for a reason, and and you 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 catch them at the wrong time, and mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Gina Cravati, former guest of the show, mm -hmm. she wants to know which four uh, four thousand footers should people with a fear of heights really avoid. That's another good question based on context. Like if someone's like a climber, they won't fear like the hiking aspect of it. I think there are some trails that maybe you should avoid. Like Washington's a good example, the Huntington Ravine Trail. Gina, do not take that if you don't like heights. <laughs> um, but overall, like all these were accessed by people in the 1800s. So they definitely like tried to find the easiest way to go up these certain routes. With that being said, I think like one in particular stands out in mine. It's Mount Jefferson. There's the Caps Ridge Trail and there's the, the Castle or Castellated Ridge Trail, people call it. Um, and those can be like kind of exposed, rocky, slippery. So there's like some elements there that um, make it a little spicier to do. Other than that, I think they're all like pretty well within the range. It's just like finding a trail that's not on the 25 terrifying <laughs> list, you know, like find a way that's up there because there's a lot of them. There's a, there's a ton of different trails. So. And I think it'd have to be kind of like, what's your definition when you say fear of heights is like looking down because I don't feel like yeah. there's too many times on the mountain, like when you get to the summit where you're like, oh my God, like yeah. I could fall off this. Right. That's rare. The scariest time I've ever had on a hike was on Morgan Percival, which are small mountains in the Squaw oh, yeah, Lake but, yeah. region, right? Actually, you suggested one. You know, yeah, the ladder section, yeah. right? And the ladder section in the summertime, it's like kind of fun and niche, but in the wintertime when it's all iced over and you don't like have good grip and stuff, it's like scary. Yeah. And that's not even a 4,000 footer. So I think it kind of depends on like exposure and like your comfort level. If I were to do that now, it'd be easy, but years like I know, this is like 15 years ago I did this that I was like gripped doing it um, but yeah like get out there you know do them Gina don't avoid any of them uh, get the whole list done <laughs> if you, know? you are afraid of heights don't fall into a spruce trap yes yeah <laughs> spruce trap uh, I don't know if Dan's <laughs> talked about it on the show but spruce trap is basically like where snow will form over a spruce burrow or bow I guess um, and basically make this like air pocket. And so when you step on the top, you think you're stepping on firm snow, but then you just punch right through and twist your ankle or knee or, yeah, I've had my share of well, spruce straps. Bobby fell in one in, uh, on moat one time and we were just uh, making fun of him, not thinking it was actually, it could, could be dangerous potentially. Yes, yeah. And we thought it was one, and then later I was like, oh yeah, that could have got, that could have got real bad. It couldn't have been bad, yeah. We we hit a few when we tried to stay overnight on the Appalachian Trail in Ethan Pond. We went in April with our friend Matt, and I remember he was punching through, and then I was laughing about it, so I started punching through, and then you started punching through the snow, and we're like, forget it. Like, we're turning oh, around, you know. Matt Day was tapped. He was yeah. tapped. He yeah. said it was harder than the tough rock. Yeah. He was like, I'd rather do the tough rock than, you it know, was, post yeah. hole and snow. When I post hole into ice water, that's when I was like, my day sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's over. Yeah. Um, yeah, anytime you get, like, any sort of moisture in the wintertime, especially, yeah. it's like, you kind of start getting to, like, that danger level. Like, it was May, though. Yeah, like, but in the, but in the, yeah. once you get old, you know, it's still yeah, winter. Once you get above, spot. yeah, you get like two thousand feet up on a mountain. It's still winter for 
long time. I did a presidential traverse guided trip, like a one night, and um, it was on uh, Memorial Day, and there were snow fields on Jefferson and Madison, and it's, yeah, it was like, so we had snow spikes, uh, and it was almost June. <laughs> so, it, it's, yeah, it stays locked in up there. It gets crazy. Um, Victoria Hawks, my sister-in-law, wants to know, uh, question mm. from Instagram, and I, if, if people are asking questions on Instagram, I gotta Ooh, make sure I that, that I am checking that, because it doesn't get as much uh, yeah. interaction there. But she wants to know, favorite hike, uh, climb in the White Mountains? My favorite hike in the White Mountains is probably the Bonds. Um, Ooh, yeah. I think my favorite 4,000 footer is West Bond. Okay. It's the one spot that I know of that you can't see the road from the mountain. You can see pretty much every other one. You can see roads and highways and all that stuff. But it's like, it feels very remote. It, and it is. It's pretty deep in there. It's like 10, 15 miles in, into the forest. Um, that's probably, yeah, probably my favorite would be like a Bonds Zealand Traverse. Um, some people do it as a one night. You can do it as one long day. Bond is we twelve hour hike. We did all the bonds. Yeah. At seven a.m. to seven p.m. And most of it's flat walking. Yeah. Just walking the, the it's getting old to railroad. It. Yeah. yeah. And it's boring, and you're like, ugh. But once you get up there, it's it's way out. There's not a lot of people. It's really nice. Um, so that, and then yeah, probably favorite climb. There's a climb called the Eaglet in Franconia Notch. It's like a freestanding spire. It's the tallest one on the East Coast that I know of, and you can climb it in like uh, three pitches, and it's it's probably the size of this table actually and you're just like standing on top of it and i'll have to post a photo on on facebook but um that's a really cool one i've been up there a couple times i get asked this because now i'm just remembering this uh where it was you and i i'm trying to remember what mountain but we saw an american martin it was and on we, and we didn't garfield. know the we, garfield and we didn't know the rarity of those super rare i've never seen one ever since I'm always on the lookout. Yeah, an American Pine Martin. It's like an orange weasel, yeah. I guess you would call it. Yeah. He was stalking us. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he was just like playing around. They're very playful. They only live in like alpine environments. And um, yeah, we were like, oh, yeah, we'll probably see those all the time. Never seen one ever since. <laughs> I, I remember I posted on Facebook in Richard Widhue, who um, I grew up in the same neighborhood. We, he, he was a dad of my friend Colin mm -hmm. growing up, and he is he's in his 70s. He's been hiking 50 years. Yeah. And he goes, you, he commented, he goes, you don't understand. You don't see those. Has he ever seen one? He, no. And he was like, yeah. that is so rare. And I remember, like, we were just, like, shocked, like, yeah. that day. You yeah. Know? That was cool. That, that's one of the more memorable, like, when you think back on the 4,000 footers, because I was trying to think on all of them, like, trails and all that stuff um yeah it's more like blips like i remember that i remember like being scared on one section and like bad weather good weather who i was with you know you kind of have those like like a collage of memories it's pretty cool yeah i mean you remember stuff like that more than like i don't i'm bad with names and trail names and things yeah. like that you know uh lily gray hitchin want uh has a few questions first she says best hiking mentor ever Woo! Is, has Lily, Lily. Has Lily Gray finished yet? LG. No, nope. she's. I believe she's still in the midst of it. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I remember talking to her a little ways back about it. But um, she wants to know uh, what are the most overrated hikes in New Hampshire, and would you what would you recommend instead? Oh man, I had to think a lot about this. I think the the Bonds are a good one that's kind of like under the radar, but I think they're getting more popular. They're just hard to get to, um, so it kind of sorts out some some folks that go out there. I love the Franconia Loop. I think it's so popular now, it's really hard to go to. A good like compromise may be going like Liberty Flume, just south That's of great. it. It's yeah. basically the same view. Um, you don't get the ridge walk that you get or like the, the waterfalls, but it's still really nice. Um, and then on the other side of the notch is the Kinsman's. And you get like such a cool, especially in the wintertime, you get this cool like total view of the whole Franconia Ridge and it's like really nice and there's the pond there and stuff. So that's a good one. Um, yeah, overrated. I think having that's done hard. Mount Washington like a gajillion times now, yeah. like I would say that, that sometimes can be overrated. It can either be like exactly the mountain that it's, you know, has notoriety for or it can just be like a regular hike. But there's so many in the summertime, especially so many tourists at the top. 
I think like a good alternative is Adams. Um, and you're going to run into people coming down that you're like, what are you doing right now? Yes. A ball of water, no flashlight, and you're going up. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know? I had, um, I wouldn't call it an argument, but a disagreement with a man who was like, he was trying to take the, um, he's trying to take the winter trail in the summer, which is closed because it's like really sketchy in the summertime. And I was like, hey man, just to let you know, like it's the summer route because it's the summer, there's no snow. So like, you don't want to go that way. He's like, well, all trails is telling me to go this way. I'm like, yeah, again, like don't go that way. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And so his, his wife eventually was like, yeah, maybe we should like follow the guy who's like guiding a group. You know, he, he might know. And, he's got uh, he's got the uniform. Yeah, yeah, he's got the uniform. So um, yeah, eventually he he was like, yeah, eh, he's probably right. Well, you know, I've always felt like if you do if you are out on the trails, not saying everybody's gonna listen to you, but if you do have like knowledge that someone is doing something dangerous, it is kind of like you should tell them. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we kind of so I'm part of the American Mountain Guide Association, and so part of that talks about like having a duty now, since you have that kind of like high level training. I also have wilderness first responder, which is like a whole medical thing. So it's like, you really do have kind of more say, but I can never tell someone to not do something. Like you, you can't hike or whatever. Like I can make suggestions and say like, based on your timing and what you're wearing and stuff, I would advise not continuing today. And like, leave it up to them, you know? Um, but I feel like more comfortable doing that now as like, a mountain professional than I did just as recreationally because yeah. I didn't want to be like the gatekeeper of the mountain. Well, and then there are like hiking snobs. Yeah, you yeah, know, they're like Mr. Hikers. Yeah, 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 you get a lot of those. Um, but yeah, I, I feel now more like comfortable doing that. And I don't have to do it that often, but in the winter time more so, I'm like, mm, like I, I would like revise that plan, you know, like the, those types of conversations I have a lot more um, than I did recreationally for sure. No, oh, absolutely. That's a tough question too. As far as like overrated, that really depends on who you are. Like, people might say like Manadnock is over. You know, we're not talking four thousand footer there, but Manadnock is a. Yeah. If, if that's what you're looking for that day, that's that's a beautiful hike, right? Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's a hard that's a hard one. I think it depends on what your definition of overrated is and what you're looking for. Yes. Yeah. Because you know? there's so much to uh, like. Do you want remoteness? Then go to Cabot. You know, yeah. you'll probably be the only person up there. But now, like, is it overrated because it's remote? Yeah. You know? So there's, like, that kind of idea. And I think as I do this more and, like, think about these, like, my idea of what I like changes over time. Um, I love to see the Lakes region, right? Mm -hmm. And nobody hypes up. Now, this is for, uh, 52 with the view. No one hypes up Mount Roberts. Go up Mount Roberts. Mm -hmm. You will have a good time if you like seeing the yeah. Lakes region. And Shaw's right there, Shaw, too. too. Right? Yes. Yeah, Shaw's nice. You know? And that was stuff that I wasn't even really, when I was doing 48, I never even looked at that other list. Yeah. And there's some really fun stuff there. Yeah. If you get too focused on the 48 list, you do miss out on some like really incredible hikes that now I'm doing with, with my wife, like on the back end, because those are more like the level that she wants to do because they're a little bit shorter. You don't have to like spend all day and all night up in the whites and stuff. So, um, yeah, going back through those, I'm like, man, so a lot of these are better than the 4,000 footers. They yeah. at least have views, you know? <laughs> like, a lot yeah. of the 4,000 footers don't have views. Yeah, a lot of 4,000 foot, like, I loved, I, that was, like, the best time of my life. Uh, yeah. But I got to say, like, yeah, not everything was great, and it was more about checking off lists, but yeah. obviously you see so much amazing stuff. Yeah. Joe Timmons uh, uh, wants to know, okay, my sorry. question for Cornell is, is cotton a viable option for pants when hiking winter conditions? No. Joe, it's still is cotton a... is still not a viable option. I took Joe out a couple of years ago, oh. and he wore like um, I want to say they're like Carhartt or like some like heavy cotton. He had like on the right track, but like cotton in the winter time absorbs water, doesn't retain heat. It's heavy, doesn't breathe. There's like a lot of like negatives to it. So like avoid wearing that. You know, coming up in the season. Um, so yeah, he instantly went out and bought um, you know like soft shell pants. It was like, oh man, what a game changer! Yeah, yeah it's like such a such a difference and when you have the right like clothing. It doesn't even have to be expensive too. You can find a lot of the stuff like you know like a, a thrift store or like um, Columbia stuff. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be like Arcteryx or anything crazy. Bringing up cotton. 
Cotton. Yeah. Cotton kills, right? That's what they say. Um, I mean, I've definitely worn a cotton shirt, like, climbing and stuff like that, but it's... it's I've worn it in the different. summer, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, when I saw that question, I was like, he, he can't, what is, he, what is this? No, no, he, he definitely knew he'd get a rise out uh, of me. Because I was like, Joe, no cotton, <laughs> please. Uh, all right, I do want to talk a little bit about your hiking here. Um, not too much on this question, but I just mm. quickly want to know, how did you get into hiking and how did it progress to where it is now? Yeah, I had to think back on this. So I think growing up in a rural area, we just went on trails and did all that stuff, like, I went hunting when I was little, and that's basically hiking with a rifle. Um, but my first memory of a hike hike was Mount Cardigan in fourth grade. Our fourth grade teacher, Mr. Pendleton, who was awesome, who was the best, um, brought us up Mount Cardigan because Canaan's right at the base of that. And I hated it. I absolutely <laughs> hated it. I was not in shape. Um, but once I got to the top, then I saw, okay, the suffering like is worth it. This is really cool. I feel like I'm on the moon, you know, it's really obsessed with space at the time. So from there, I kind of like always like camped and, you know, did those things. I didn't do much in college until the end when I, you know, did my first 4,000 footers, which was the Franconia Ridge. Um, and I was like, oh, these are like really cool, you know, like I need to do a lot more of this. So, and then from there, I just like, hammered them out you know real quick um but yeah and ever since then i've been i do it almost like monthly at least you know a couple hikes a month i would say oh yeah you stayed you stayed with it since i've known you know since i've known you yeah. it before that um yeah i mean it's funny like i didn't get into it now i'm kind of away from hiking at this point i should get back into it but like I didn't hike at all when I went to Plymouth State, and I was mm. right in the the center of mm. of it, and I just wasn't into it yet. Yeah, you know. And but uh, what was your experience like doing the forty eight? Like, what was it? What what was that feeling? And I know how you know you have this. When I finished the forty eight, it was like an amazing feeling, mm. and then I got in the car and was like, now what? Yeah. What was your What was your feeling when you finished? Yeah, I think it was the same because I did West Bond kind of purposely as my end. Um, because I heard it was so good and I wanted to camp out at Gio campsite, which is right there. So I did that and then like I tented out that night and yeah, I just laid there and I was like, okay, now do I go back and redo them yeah. or, you know, do I do something different? Um, and that's kind of where I started getting into like more like technical stuff after that because I love the mountains and I just want to like find different ways for them to challenge me. And like once you hike enough, you're like, okay, like I'm pretty locked in and hiking for me now is nice because I can just like turn off the brain a little bit and just like do it. Yeah. Um, where climbing, there's like so much to think about and it's kind of like, it's really taxing. There's like a lot of logistics and you gotta get the right partner and all that stuff. But the rewards of that can be pretty high too. Um, but yeah, just like elation, relief. Like I'm finally done. <laughs> I don't have to come up here every weekend. Or, you know, come up and the weather's bad and you have to turn around, you feel like you wasted a day, all that stuff. So, um, but now that I get to like go back and do them with clients and stuff like that, that's a lot of fun to see. See it through their kind of perspective. It's like, oh yeah, I remember being like that, you know, really excited. And um, yeah, overall, like I, I still like going up there and, and hitting them from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, it is just a weird feeling. Cause I, I mean, I, I definitely, like when I finished in 2017, like I was like, I'm not done with this. And then yeah. it was going for a while, but then obviously other things and pandemic happens, all this other stuff, mm -hmm. and you get you get further away from it. And it's I think it's awesome that like you have not, and after you've taken it to like another level, you yeah. know, so that, that that's commendable. Um, what would you tell someone whose goal is to finish the 48, 4,000 footers? I would tell them, don't worry too much about the order in which you do them. I think there are a good handful to do first to get like a taste, like t Tecumseh, Hail. Hail, Osceola. Like there's a couple to like get your bearings under you. Um, but don't worry too much about like when I do this one, what am I going to say for the last? Just go do them, really. Um, find the right people I think matters, who you hike with. In winter time, you know, gear choices are way more important. Um, and yeah, just 
just do it. You know, I, I think some people get so worked up about the logistics of it when it's just, it's just hiking and like, um, you know, just being out there is kind of the end goal. Like, don't put so much pressure on summiting. Just like, put the like energy on just the experience, like just being out there. Um, that's what's nice about doing the 4,000 footers, right? You probably feel the same way. When you go up there, you don't feel like you're like, I have to do a 4,000 footer right now. Um, just experience it, you know, don't worry about the, the lineup of it, just do it. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I, I printed out a list and I kept it on my desk at work and I would cross it off every week. Mm -hmm. And when I first was, because I had done a few before I actually went for it, and I would just be like, all right, what are the hikes I can do by myself where I don't need anybody else? Yeah. Not that you need anybody, but like, you're not going to want to hike Adams all by yourself. Like, you're just, you know, yeah, you're not going to want to do that. So, like, you know, went through that, and then you, you just start crossing them off. But I think you you got to one thing at a time, one weekend at a time. Yeah. It, it, it is painful when you have to turn around when you're right. uh, when you're trying to get a list done. But, I mean, I've now turned around. We did, we did that Musilaki one. We're like, yeah, we're not summoning today. Yeah. And, and there was we didn't feel any loss. No. You know, no. or even with that day with Washington, it wasn't like I was heartbroken. I was like, I've already done it. Yeah. So, but I think when I was going for it, I would have been like, oh, that's crushing. Yes. Yeah. You know? I, I'm better about it now. I had a difficult time when I attempted Mount Rainier this summer. I got to 13,100 feet, which is just about 1,000 feet, 1,300 feet shy of the summit. And I think when you go on a big trip like that you have to go to washington and like get all the gear do all the training get permits there's a lot more involved than just like shooting up washington and back so like the summit fever and the summit bid is so heavier so like that was disappointment that i haven't felt in a long time but it kind of made me realize like okay but i mean just to even be on mount rainier and like i led that trip you know like those types of things you have to take away from your mountain experience because the mountains are going to do what the mountains are going to do and they're going to be there still they're going to be there long after you have been there yeah. <laughs> so like don't worry about it um you know just just experience it like that's probably the best thing i could tell people absolutely um how did you end up becoming a guide how that how that wind up so i ended up becoming a guide through my mentor shout out to maddie bowman if he watches this he probably will he's a, also a number one fan right after marshall littlefield okay <laughs> uh, but he is a very accomplished um, ice climber in the region and he's a guide for northeast mountaineering which is who i now guide for and years ago my wife and i did like a two-day ice course with him and uh he was like yeah like you guys are doing great like you know, um, do X, Y, and Z. And he's always kind of mentored me a little bit. And I got to the level where he's like, yeah, you could come do some stuff with Northeast Mountaineering. Like you are prepared to do that. Um, Cause a big part of guiding, some people think it's like the logistics of, do you have to know how to tie knots and all that stuff? And partially, yes. But I think it's more so like people skills, which is the job that we both have at Southern New Hampshire University. We're like talking to people all day and you have to be able to converse with folks and do that stuff so slowly i went from like being a guest with northeast mountaineering to like working for them and now like um trying to like promote them and do stuff with them on the weekend so um hopefully it offsets some of the cost of my <laughs> gear yeah it hasn't much because now i get pro deals on stuff so yeah. actually i feel like i spend a little more um, because I'm like, oh, wow, I could get stuff half off. I'm, yeah. I'll buy two, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's so much fun and it's, it's just like a passion project really. Yeah, absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. what's the most rewarding part? I think when you have an experience with someone, you know, we call them like experiences, right? It could be like Mount Washington or waterfall repel. I just did like a, a rock climbing clinic. It was like a free clinic for people to do. And it's, it's like the reward of someone looking up and they go, yeah, I want to do more of this, yeah. you know? Or like on Instagram, they'll shoot me a message and say, hey, how do I get more into this? Like, I really love this. And that's kind of like, that reminds me of why I got into it and why I like doing that stuff and being a newbie and passing the craft down to people. Like that is the most rewarding part for sure. There are hard days, though. Yeah, I was going to say, like, what are the challenges? The challenges are, I mean, you have to, it's not like a desk job where you can just, like, kind of log in and, 
do your thing. You have to be like physically fit. You have to be way more fit than your clients, which nine out of 10, you will be, but there will be like one person every once in a while who's like an ultra marathon yeah. or something and you have to keep pace with them. And yeah. it's like really hard. So those are hard. I think um, sometimes you can have like a client that's a little bit of a slower pace. Like one day I helped out with um, a Mount Washington hike. It was in the summer. It was a 12 hour day, 12 hour hike, which usually for me, it's six to eight hours. Eight hours is like a long day up there. So it was like an additional four. So that was long. Um, and the, the, you know, the pay for a guide is the same. Or like a hard part of like really working hard with a client and like feeling like you connect with them. And then like, they're like, okay. And like, there's no like gratuity or like, thank you at the end. You're like, yeah. oh, like, did I do something wrong? You know, like I feel like I messed up as a guide. Like th those are hard days, but the good stuff far outweighs the, those hard moments for sure. Now, what do you what do you say when you're like, honey, I'm I'm gonna be gone for twelve hours for to be a guide <laughs> to Michaela, my yeah, wife. Yeah, she's extremely supportive. She's yeah. the best. Um, well, it helps that I'll like frantically do all the dishes that I can, <laughs> clean all the bathrooms, prep meals. You know, I try to uh, set up as much as possible for her. But she's a rock star with our son, and like, um, she understands it's like a really important part, and it's what. Um, I like to do to like feel alive, you know, yeah. like I was thinking about like people have jobs that like allow them to like live. And then there are jobs that make people feel like they're living or like alive. So that's kind of for me. Guiding is, you know, not super lucrative in New Hampshire because of our seasons are like not great. Um, so it's like really hard to make a living. So I think it will probably be like a permanent like part time like per diem thing yeah um, but i love it it's so fun awesome awesome now i want to talk about this too because we did talk about this a little bit and we got a big live stream tomorrow yes yeah um what's your favorite part of the halloween season <sighs> watching tons of horror movies <laughs> i try to find like the newest scariest movies that i can find for me lately it's been found footage stuff so i've been doing a ton of that but it's like watching those movies. I've been like building my costumes more. Like this is like, I'm gonna be doing like a revamp to Michael Myers this year at Salem this weekend. So if anyone's in Salem, I'll be there Saturday. If you wanna come take a picture with me. Um, so that that stuff, like the costumes, the movies, I, I'm in, I'm, I'm full up. Nice, nice. And that was not a call to action. If you'd like to do it, yeah, yeah. you can, <laughs> you can. True. Um, <laughs> We just wanna, we don't want to upset the network. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now I'm gonna ask, uh, how'd you become? So like, I think I've talked to you about this before. Like, you got into horror movies as a kid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had an older brother who convinced me that Children of the Corn was real, and other movies like that. So, I think like being so scared as a kid, but now finding them like comforting in a strange way, because I'm like I'm growing up, but like I know it's fake. Um, and they're more like fascinating and niche, you know, um, don't get me wrong. There's definitely scary movies that still get me, but, um, yeah, just growing up, like everyone has that older brother that shows you movies that you're probably too young to see. Yeah. So like that and, you know, growing up in the woods is naturally a scary place, <laughs> uh, for sure. But yeah. Do you have a top five, uh, horror movies? Yeah, I thought about this question a lot because I knew it would probably come up. I think in terms of like rewatchability and what I just kind of like enjoy in general, I'd say Phantasm, 1970s kind of psychedelic weird horror movie. Um, Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. That's, a, that's just a fun That's movie. just fun. Yeah. It's really good. Um, it's like an action movie. More yeah. than anything. Um, Halloween, for sure. Uh, I put Tremors on there because okay. I love a good, um, you know, monster movie. Um, and then either it's got to be like, it's got to be like Hereditary Ooh. or, yeah, I'll probably put Hereditary Who's on that director there. again? Um, Ari Aster? Yeah, he's, did you see Midsommar? Yes, that's also pretty good. I like that better. I haven't I seen. Like that I haven't seen Bo's Afraid yet because okay. it's three hours, so oh, I haven't geez. sat down. 
But I also thought about Jaws too. Okay. It was one of those first movies that really scared me. Like I couldn't even go to the bathroom. I was afraid of the toilet water. <laughs> you know, like that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, those like I think it covers the gamut of like I can rewatch those a million times. Yeah, the debate always is is Jaws a horror movie? And I guess you could, you know, I always just like maybe I'm just a sick person. I'm just no. like in the summer, I'm like I gotta watch Jaws. Yeah, you know what I mean? July. Like, July. Okay. We just watched it at a beach house in um, where were we? Hampton or like at Seabrook? I can't remember. No, Salisbury. We're in Salisbury, and we're like, yeah, put on Jaws. You know, this is like the summer movie. Can't close the beaches on the yeah, can't of close the beaches. Yeah, <laughs> Fourth of July. Um, I gotta ask this. We may have asked you this before because me and you, me, you, and Anthony Brogan have done show those live streams before. We're yeah. gonna do another one. Uh, who wins in a fight, Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees? <sighs> I'm gonna say not zombie Jason. I'm gonna say oh, Voorhees. not becoming, zombie. So it's like I don't a, know if you can really even one on one. Yeah. Probably, if it's not zombie Jason, I would say Michael Myers would take it. But zombie, would you give it to? Zombie, I would definitely give to Michael or to Jason. Yeah, how do you sure. stop him? It's unstoppable. Yeah. But the thing with Michael Myers, because in the original, Nick Castle is not a very big guy. I think yeah. he's like five eight or five. Really? So he's like fairly small. And Jason's always been kind of a bigger character. So strength wise, right, it's kind of a mismatch. Unless but you got Rob Zombie's version of Michael Myers. Yeah, who's like, what was it like six eight? Yeah, six ten. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. Goes um, from that little kid, that kid to. <laughs> yeah, that, you you're know. like, uh. Um, but yeah, I think you know, human to human, probably Michael Myers with like the pure drive. Guy just you know wants to kill um but like zombie jason for sure is, is pretty strong you know it's interesting i've been i've been listening to a lot of interviews from rob zombie and it sounds like because i know anthony we've talked about on the mm. live stream he's, he's he really not too big of a fan of the rob zombie versions i like yeah. the first one but the more we've talked about it the more flaws i see in the movies yeah especially the second one sounds like the wine scenes were all over him throughout making yeah. that. Yeah, to make it like more intense or like, I don't know, give more of a backstory. Yeah, he said that everything he gave them, like they would, you know, and obviously Cheap now we know down. the wine, how every wine scene's not, you know. Yeah, not the most reputable character yes. ever. Um, yeah. But it sounds like, like they just, everything was pushed back. And yeah. Those movies didn't come out the way that he wanted. He actually no. said he did the second one only if they'd let him out of his contract to do a third one. Oh, interesting. You know? Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, how are you feeling going in tomorrow? I want to talk about mm. this a little bit because we have had Facebook interaction. I, I did a seating on there. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we've been having everybody kind of vote. I don't know. Have you been, been watching the polls at all? Yeah, some surprising things in there. Anything that stuck out that you were like, I didn't see? H2O cleaned the clock of Jason Lives. Yes. Um, that is surprising. Because I definitely think Jason Lives is, I think overall, like a strong movie. If, even if it wasn't Jason, I think it's like a fun movie. Um, yeah, there was another one. Was it Jason Part 7 and maybe Halloween 4 was that? Was that the matchup? Yeah, that, I don't think that made it through, yeah. Yeah, I don't think so either. To the Elite 8, yeah. Yeah, because I think... Friday 2 beat it, uh, I think knocked it off, I want to yeah. say. Okay, yeah, Friday 2. Yeah, because I now, like I was talking to you earlier, that I'm re-watching those like later Halloweens. I'm like, oh yeah, these are, like, if I can ignore the mask and like some of the goofiness, like it's pretty pretty scary, like pretty fun stuff. Um, so I'm like, I'm getting more of an appreciation from them if I kind of don't have such a critical eye of it, you know? Well, I, I think back to being, like when I look at the original Halloween, which I guess I have come around to say that's the best, you know, to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, that being said, it, when you, I wonder what it was like watching that without knowing any backstory before. Yeah. They wanted to call it like the babysitter murders. Yes. Yeah. I think that was the original title. Yeah. I tell my wife this frequently. I think the coolest thing in the future that I hope for is like some sort of like medication or something where you can like forget a movie. You can say like, okay, I want to forget Halloween. Yeah. And you take the medication and then you watch it like it's the first time. That would be cool, you know, like not knowing, you're like, oh man, it's like, what is going on? Um, yeah, I, I can't imagine. My uncle saw 
uh, Friday the 13th Part 3, the 3D one. Yeah. And he remembers it being funny, which it is goofy because of the 3D gags. But um, other than that, yeah, I've never, like, talked to anyone about, like, seeing it originally. I think my mom saw the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which scared her pretty good. Exorcist, right? Everyone has an exorcist story. But, yeah, I, I, I don't know because it was such a novel idea. Um, yeah, because I think just looking at, it, like, now, as you see the mask here, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we hit there, like, this is iconic. Yeah. There's, you know, you go into a Walmart, there's Michael Myers on a t-shirt. You go in any mm-hmm. store in the country, you know, not every store, but a lot of stores in the country. It's iconic. Like, what was it like, I wonder, just seeing that for the first time, not knowing anything about it. The second movie hasn't come out, so you don't even know that backstory, which yeah. I guess wasn't even part of the original idea. It's just, to me, I, I, I started to just, I just wonder what that was like when that came out. Like, what yeah. were people thinking? You know, I think probably pretty scary. It's like it scary. makes him even more f- scary, in my opinion, that you yeah. know nothing about him. Yes, really. yeah, that's what I like about yeah those originals and sometimes just a I mean studios want to make more money, right? So they're like, okay, we got to have a backstory and we got to have a prequel and we got to have yeah. you know what I mean? And it kind of ruins the mystique of it and like the legend and lore because that's where your mind goes, especially when I was a kid because I would only see like you know, glimpses of, like, the Jason movies, and that's all I had to work off of. Like, who is this guy? Why does yeah. he kill? And all this, you know, I'd lay awake at night thinking about it. But, um, yeah, you have to have, like, some mystery in there, you know, and that's why, like, the original so good because it's just, like, this, this is, like, a snapshot of this thing happened and there's no reason for it, and that makes it even scarier. That is what I think is what was terrifying about Myers. Yeah. Uh, I do want to get into my favorite segment of the show, which is blank versus blank. I'm yes. going to give you two things. You're going to pick one. Tell me why. Um, would you rather wear Crocs or socks with sandals? Oh, Crocs. I got Crocs on right now. Oh, yes, It's you required do. guide wear, yeah. for sure. Is that kind of like your after shoes? Or? It's like my permanent shoe right now. Like, really? I'm, yeah, I'm trying to rock the Crocs as far as I can. They're just so comfortable. I think my feet take such a pounding. I need to like have something soft to wear because okay. those mountaineering boots are not comfortable. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, the, uh, yeah, not enjoyable. But yeah, Crocs. Okay. Um, all right, I got some Halloween ones here. Um, okay, okay. Better franchise: Nightmare on Elm Street Ooh. or the Saw movies? <sighs> oh, okay. Um, oh, man, I'm going to say. Nightmare on Elm Street, just because I have more familiarity with that. Okay. I've seen a few of the saws overall, but yeah, I have more nostalgia for the Nightmare on Elm Street stuff. I was late to the game with with Freddy. I never even watched the yeah. Freddy movie until probably 2016. Really? Okay. Uh, they, yeah. You know, I was already into the Jasons mm-hmm. and the and the Myers for years because I didn't get to horror movies till college. Mm. I, AMC is what kind of got me yes. really going. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And then I realized like the Freddies are never really on TV. Mm-hmm. So they were in the they had the Freddy one and two in one of the Walmart bins. Yep. And I was like, wow, that's kind of weird. That's just in the bin, like. And I never <laughs> never watched them, so I bought it, mm. put it in, watched the first one. I went, all right, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get why people like this. This was this was really good. Yeah. I, it's so much iconic stuff. Then I watched the second one and was like, "What? What? What is this?" Like, yeah, it goes off. There's some weird, and yeah. I don't want to get into it, but there's a lot of weird stuff about that. And I was like, "Okay, that one off the rails." Yeah. But then someone was like, "You gotta, you gotta see Dream Warriors." Dream Warriors. Good. And then I that brought me back in, and I was like, "Dream Warriors, fantastic! Probably one of my favorites of all horror yeah. movies." And then it just kind of goes off the rails. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, there is some really good stuff. Yeah. Like all the franchises, they definitely have moments where they're way more enjoyable and you have more favorites. Yeah. Like, there are definitely plenty of Friday the 13th that I'm like, it's painful to watch. But um, the ones that stand out, like, really remind you why you like it. Yeah. I, and I do. And I like the franchise now. Mm-hmm. It's just, there. I'd say Nightmare has the most holes out of the three main guy the three main yes. horror franchises yeah it's kind of tough to it's like all of them fall into like this repetitive nature yeah. but that at least with like freddy you can it's like the dream world you can do all sorts of stuff yeah. you know and that's good and bad because you could get really goofy and like and that's where it does it starts to get just goofy uh, too over the top yeah like 
so yeah, the fur like one and three definitely are very good. And like after that it gets kind of murky, but um, yeah, those scared me too. I mean, what's scarier than not being able to sleep? Yeah, yeah. First nightmare, in my opinion, horror masterpiece, yeah. very similar to Halloween, mm -hmm. but a lot of you know in Dream Warriors it's just that's fun. That's like Jason yeah. Lives. It's just fun. Um, would you rather hike in the fall or winter? <sighs> Probably. I'm gonna say winter. I'm gonna say winter now that I'm far more experienced and like adequately clothed. Okay. That's the key. Someone once said there's no bad weather, there's just bad clothing choices for hiking. So I think that's fair. Yeah, that's I definitely fair. Because I've with been that. pretty warm winter hiking when it's very. Yeah. Warmer than summer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the right choices, uh, that helps. And less people. And it's quiet too. It's like eerily quiet. Yeah, don't hike alone during the winter unless you really, in case something happens. You know, oh, maybe. yeah, yeah, yep. that's for sure. Um, spring or summer? For hiking? Yeah. Mm, um, probably summer. Summer, yeah. Yeah. Spring, you get in the mud season. That can be brutal. Yeah, black flies. Yes. Yeah, it's probably my least favorite. Um, do you like hiking or climbing better? Probably climbing now. If you ask me in a year, it might go back and forth, but climbing, probably. Okay. Uh, here's what I want to know. Two singers that I really like. Mm. Janet Jackson or Mariah Carey? <laughs> um, probably Janet Jackson. I have more fun. Fun uh, memories of listening to her and um, and her brother doing mashup songs. Yeah. I'd say give a slight edge to Janet. I just love Janet, and I, you know she also had the two guys there from um, Jimmy Jam and, and uh, the two of them there. Yes, yeah. they they're unbelievable producers. So. Um, would you rather wear Hoka or Saucony? I used to wear Hoka, so I'd probably say Hoka, but for some reason they got so narrow, so I switched to. Topos. Okay. It's a company out of Massachusetts. It's pretty, pretty good. I'd recommend. Yeah, I've been wearing Hoka's for a, for a long time, mm. and uh, I buy a pair. I still do, do the Tough Rock. Every They're so year. comfy. Yeah. 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 I'll buy them for the Rock and then wear them all year. Mm -hmm. uh, last one. Which holiday do you enjoy more, Halloween or Christmas? Halloween, for yeah. sure. Yeah. All the way, easily. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Like, you know, Christmas is very family oriented, but I, I just yeah. enjoy this this time of year. I mean, as a kid, the presents. Yeah. Like, you can't go wrong with that. But as an adult, I enjoy Halloween way more that I can, like, get a cool costume and all that stuff. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I can't wait to be Papa Shango this year. That's what the uh, no. <laughs> the Facebook Nation uh, has for. decided. Yeah. Nice. So. Cool. But anyways, Dan, I really cool. appreciate you coming Thanks, on the show. Man. It's been a blast. Yeah, appreciate will, it. You'll, uh, you'll see Herbie Dan tomorrow on the Let Freedom Ring live stream as we decide what's the best uh, movie out of the Halloweens of Friday the 13th on Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. But everybody out there, have a great week. Keep your heads up. Until next time, Let Freedom Ring. <laughs>